Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As December is well underway, my end of year programming is also ramping up. I've got a series of videos looking at all of the books that I've read this year, listing out my favourites, and today it's the turn of the series. So in this video, I'm going to recap all of the series that I've kind of touched upon in 2022. So every one of the ongoing series that I've read a book from, all the series that I've not read anything from in 2022, but I still consider to be actively ongoing. So let's go and take a look at what I've been reading in 2022. So there are 37 different series in this list and I'm going to put each of those into one of four categories. So at the bottom of the screen here I've got series that I've finished so I've read the final book of this series in 2022. Then we've got the soft DNFs. So these are the series that I've put to the side. I'm not actively going to continue reading them, but I'm open to continuing at some point. I just can't see that being in the immediate future. Then we've got the series that I'm up to date with. So I've read all of the books that are currently available, but the author is still writing the series, so there will be future books for me to get to. And then at the top, we've got the series that I count as being actively ongoing. So whether the series is complete or not, I haven't read all of the books that are currently available and at some point in the hopefully not too distant future I will be moving through the available books and fingers crossed moving them into the finished category in a future video just like this one. So I've organised these into alphabetical order by series and we start off with The Ashes of Averin by Chiago Abdella. So with this one I've recently moved it from up to date into ongoing because there is a new book coming out in this series very soon and I do have an advanced review copy of this one ready for me to start on my Kindle. So it's going to be one of the next books I read. So it's temporarily moved into the ongoing category and very soon it'll be going back into up to date when I've read A Shade of Madness. Then we have The Aspect by Mark Holloway. This is a series I started back in July as one of my early books in SBFB08 and I really enjoyed The Souls Aspect when I read it. So the next one up for me in this series is The Souls Instruments. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it but it is one that I'm aiming to get to before too long. Next we've got The Beast Hunter of Ashbourne by Krista Linda and I read The Beast Hunters uh, way back in February or March of this year. And the next one up for me is a more recent release, which is The Beast Hunter Dark Sovereign. So I do quite like these new covers that we've got here. They're quite atmospheric and I love the colour splash on there. I had a pretty good time with The Beast Hunter, so I'm hoping to continue that when I get to this one. One of the older titles on this list in terms of when I last touched the series is Black Tongue by Christopher Buellman. So I read the Black Tongue Thief book one in this series way back in May 2021. It is in my up to date category at the moment because so far we haven't had news on book two in this series. At some point I might have to move it into the soft DNF category where I do have some series but I am waiting on the new book and have been waiting on it for several years. So I don't actively record those in my series list. For now though, this is an active series, so it goes into my up-to-date category. Meeting it there, we have A Bloodsworn by John Gwynn, so I'm two books into this series, as is the author himself. So the last book that I read was back in April when The Hunger of the Gods came out. As soon as book three comes out, and I don't have any details on that one at the moment, I will be looking to pick it up straight away and either add it to the up-to-date category once more, or potentially to the finished category, because I think it might be set as a trilogy. Next up I've got The Bound and the Broken by Ryan Carhill and this one I'm currently up to date with. I've read the two books and the two novellas that have been released for this one so far with Of Darkness and Light book two being in November of 2021. So I will be picking this one up again soon because book three in the series of War and Ruin is going to be released in January and I'll be reading that one as soon as I can get my grubby little hands on it. Next up on my list is Burn Red Skies by Kirsten Espinosa Rosero. I think this one is actually just a duology, so I've got one book down, and the next and I believe final book that I have to read for this one is Rise Red Kingdom. So I read Burn Red Skies in July, so it's about time that I got back to this one. I'm not sure when I will do, but it's going to be a nice easy one hopefully to tick off a list and move into the finish category. One that I have moved into finished this year is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So I wasn't actively tracking this one. It wasn't in the stats when I list the series that I'm in the middle of and so forth in my monthly wrap up. But book three of this one, Children of Memory, came out in November and I got a review copy of this one and knocked it out in October. So this one has now moved into that bottom category. 
I'm relatively sure that it is closing down as a trilogy, but I suppose if there is another book coming out in the future, I'll just open it up again. Next up, I've got The Chronicles of the Bitch Queen, or I think this one might have been renamed The Chronicles of the Wolf Queen. This is by K.S. Veloso, and it starts off with The Wolf of Orin Yarrow. So I'm one book deep into this series at the moment. The next one on my list is The Ikasar Falcon. I wasn't too enthused with it. I did enjoy book one but not enough to make me really want to rush out and continue the series so for the moment I've decided to move this one into the soft DNF pile because I didn't see enough in that first book to make me actively want to keep tracking this series and looking to pick up the second book at some point so down the line that might change and I might pick it up again but for the moment it's going into the soft DNFs. Another series that I'm up to date with is The Continuer Chronicles by Jim Wilborn. So as far as the books go, the last read in this series was back in September 2021 when The Seventh Cadence came out. And I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to continuing the series. And I have read the new novella that came out recently, Strangers in the Promised Land. But I don't have news at this point as to when book two proper in the series is going to be. One that I've recently opened up and changed categories on is the Darkwater Legacy by Chris Wooding. So I read The Ember Blade back in March and I quite enjoyed it. And now we've got book two, The Shadow Casket, coming out in February. I've moved this one into the ongoing pile though, because I do currently have a digital review copy on my Kindle waiting for me to read this one. So it will move into the up-to-date category as soon as I've finished it. But for now, it's actively ongoing. Similarly titled, we've then got The Shadow Gate, which is book two in the Dragon Spirits by L. L. McRae. This one I'm up to date with because this book hasn't come out yet. Again, this is a series that I started back in March when I read both the novella, The Citrine Key, and book one in the series, The Iron Crown. So I'm looking forward to this one coming out. At the moment, I'm up to date with the series though. And then one of my ongoing series is Echoes of the Fall by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Now this one, I did also consider moving into the soft DNF for similar reasons to The Wolf of Orin Yaro, but I think I did have a better time with The Tiger and the Wolf when I read that one. And I do also have physical copies of book two and three in this series, so that has helped me make the decision to continue with this one as one of my actively ongoing series. And then we've got The Echoes Saga by Philip C. Quaintrell. I read book one of nine, Rise of a Ranger, recently, and I did have quite a good time with it. So this one I'm putting into my ongoing series list, and the next one I've got in this one is book two, Empire of Dirt. Another book one that I really enjoyed recently was the written by Ben Gelly. This was the start of the Emanesca series. So I'm actively ongoing with this one. I've got Pale Kings up next. I'm going to be listening to this one in the next month or two. And then it's one of the series that I'm hoping to wrap up in 2023 by reading books three and four as well. I know I've spoken about this one for quite a while and it might be a bit of a surprise to see that it is still in my ongoing series list and uh, kind of hopefully will stay there for a good long time because it is another nine book series. This is The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. I read Leviathan Wakes book one in the series way back in August 2019 so it's the longest standing title on my list in that sense. Book two is Caliban's War, and I am really going to try to read this one in 2023 after having it on my list for 2022 and still not getting to it. Next up, it's another one I'm afraid that's going into my soft DNF category. I've been reading The Farseer by Robin Hobb. I'm two books into the three book series, but I haven't been able to get the motivation to pick up Assassin's Quest. I just didn't have a good enough time with the first two books in this series. So maybe one day, especially because I do have the entire trilogy in paperback on my shelves, maybe one day I will pick it up again. But for the moment, I'm putting it to the side. It's going into the soft DNFs. Another one I've got the paperback trilogy for is The God King Chronicles by Mike Brooks. This one I started off in April with The Black Coast. Next up is The Splinter King and I am looking forward to continuing this one as one of the series in my reading plans for 2023. Now I've got another one that I'm moving into my soft DNFs after not touching a book in this series throughout the year. And this one is The Great Leveller by Joe Abercrombie. So this is the trio of standalones in his first law world. So I read Best Surf Cold back in September 2021. And I kept trying to pick up the heroes and then moving on to Red Country. But I just didn't get to it. So this one... Out of all of the series that I'm putting into my soft DNF pile today, this is the one that I'm probably the most likely to pull out of it and continue with. But for the moment, I'm moving it to the side. It's going into the soft DNFs. 
Joining it there is going to be The Hellborn King by Christopher G. Brenning. I read the book of the same name a couple of months ago and it was okay but it didn't really enthrall me too much so I've not really had the motivation to pick up book two which is The Wrathbringer. As a result I'm putting this one to the side and I'm not going to be actively tracking it anymore. Now this one's a little bit of a strange one, it's Heritor's Helm by L.A. Book, and book one of the series was The Fire of the Forebears. Now I'm actually going to move this one into the finished category because sadly the author has passed away so the series will not be continuing. I do consider Fire of the Forebears to be a book that sits well as a standalone, so although it's only one book in the series, because I was tracking it from when I originally read this book, I'm going to close it down on my stats and I'm going to move it into the finished category. Next up I've got The Illborn Saga by Daniel T. Jackson. This is one of my series that is actively ongoing but it's in the up-to-date category because book two hasn't been released yet. It's another one of the many series I've got on my list that's coming out with another book in January or February 2023. For the moment I don't have a copy yet of A Dual Sin book two in this series so this one's going to stay in up-to-date. Another of the series that's on my list for 2023 as far as the reading goals that I've set is The Last War by Mike Shackle. I had a really good time when I read book one in this series, We Are The Dead, but I still, for whatever reason, haven't got round to A Fool's Hope, which is next up for me as book two in this series. So I've put it in as one of the series that I want to continue with and or finish in 2023, so I will, I promise myself, be moving on with this one. One that I was able to cross off my series list for 2022 as one of my reading goals was Lacanius by James Islington. So I finally got round to reading book three in this series, which was The Light of All That Falls. So this one I'm pretty happy to put into the finished category. Joining it there, I've got a series that I both started and finished in 2022. So I read Cold From the North, book one of the Onyxborn Chronicles by D.W. Ross, back in February and then in November I wrapped up the series with A Fury of Fate. So this one's another series that I've been able to complete. I've then got Pillars of Peace by Tom Dumbrell. This one is going into my ongoing series list. I've again put this one on my plan for 2023 because it's another one that I want to continue with and hopefully finish next year. So I've read The Look of the King which is book one meaning book two is next for me and that one is No Place for Peace. Quest for Heroes is next by Stephen Arian. This is a duology with the Coward and the Warrior, and I read both of these this year, finishing off this series, so this one goes into that nice little happy bottom category. The Reborn Empire by Devin Madsen is another series that I've put on my goals list for 2023 because I've been enjoying this one so far. I've got book three up next, which is We Cry for Blood, so this one's going into my ongoing series list. And then there's Ringlander by Michael S. Jackson. This one's going into up to date. I don't have details of book two in the series yet, but I have read the first book in the series, which is The Path and Away. So I'm looking forward to book two in this one, but for the moment, I'm up to date with it. The same can be said for Riven World by M.L. Spencer, so I've read Dragon Mage, and there is a title for book two, I believe, but I can't remember what it is. Whenever that one comes out, I'll be looking to get hold of it, but for the moment, I'm up to date in this series as well. Next up is a series by G.M. White. This is The Royal Champion, which started out with The Swordsman's Lament, and I've got book two up next for me, and this one is The Swordsman's Descent. So this, I believe, is quite a bit bigger in terms of page count than the first book in the series, but it's one that I had a pretty good time with, so I'm looking forward to. At the moment, I'm on going with this one, because although I've got book two, I haven't read it yet. And then we've got one of the rare sci-fi titles in this list. This is The Song of Camaria by T.A. Bruno. So I've read two out of the three books in this one. Last up for me was On the Winds of Quasars, and I've got the last book in the series to go, which is At the Threshold of the Universe. So this one is going into my ongoing list. Joining it there, we've got Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. So I finally made progress in 2022 on this series. So I read back in May, I think it was, Words of Radiance. So next up for me is Oathbringer, and it's another one of the series that I've added again to my list for 2023. So I'm looking to read Oathbringer and hopefully Rhythm of War as well next year. Then one of the series that I've finished, this is Threadlight by Zach Argyll. So I read Bonds of Chaos back in August, just when it came out, and really had a good time with the series overall, but with that third book in particular. So this is one that I was really pleased to finish up. It was one of the plans that I had for 2022 because I was having such a good time with the series, and I'm really pleased that that continued right up to the last page. 
Another one of those series that I both started and finished in 2022 is the Tide Child Trilogy by R.J. Barker. So I read The Bone Chips, Call of the Bone Chips and The Bone Chips Wake all in consecutive months earlier on in the year. I had a good time overall with this series so I was quite happy to add it to the finish category. Then we've got another series that I haven't touched in a little while but it is actively ongoing. This is Tyrus Rex Contracts and Terminations by Jason Ansbach and Nick Cole. It's part of the Galaxy's Edge uh, kind of universe of books that the two authors write. And with this one, I read book two which was Chasing the Dragon back in July 2020. 2020? Back in July 2020, so I've got book three up next, which is Madame Guillotine, and I am going to try to read that one before too long, so I can move this into the completed series list. And then the final series on this list today is The War Returnal by Rob J. Hayes. This is another series that I'm actively ongoing with at the moment, because I've read book three, that one being from Cold Ashes Risen, so I've got Sins of the Mother next as book four, and then book five is coming out shortly as well. So this is one of the series that I'm hoping to not only continue, but to finish off in 2023. So there we go, that's my series recap for 2022. I did do some maintenance of this list last year when I did this similar kind of video, which I'll link in the cards up above, uh, because I had a lot of series that I did move into the DNF or soft DNF categories because I was tracking them, but I wasn't actively continuing with those series. The series that I put into the soft DNF category at that point will remain in soft DNF or I'll just forget about them and, eff and effectively DNF them for good. But they are there as available options to me, as are the ones that join it from this video. If you enjoyed this recap, do the usual stuff with liking this video. Check out my social media and support the channel links in the description box below this video. And let me know in the comments which of the ongoing series I've listed here you think I should be working on first to move into the finish category. I'll hopefully catch you in the next video sometime soon, but until then as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books, Bye for now.